Hi, I'm Justin. I'm going to show you how to make an alpha from an image, use it for high-resolution texturing in ZBrush, and export it for 3D print. I'll be using Photoshop CS3 Extended and ZBrush 4R5. An alpha is a grayscale image, and ZBrush will change the depth of the surface of the model according to the value of gray for each pixel. Now, you'll see that if we change this image to a grayscale, we'll have all of this background texture in our alpha, and we don't want that. So in this case, we'll go to Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast. We can change the brightness up and the contrast down. It's going to be different for almost every image you use. Sometimes you'll have to cut it out manually and delete the background that way. We're going to press OK and go to Select, Color Range, select the white background and press OK with the default settings. Press delete on your keyboard and you'll see by turning off the background layer that we have only the fingerprint. Press Ctrl D on your keyboard to deselect the background area, image, adjustments, and we can go to desaturate. This is OK, but we want it darker so that we get a stronger displacement. We'll go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. Take out all this empty space here and move the mid-range to white. All right, that looks better. Now, ZBrush recognizes Photoshop format, so we can File, Save As, and I'd already saved it. I'm going to save over that one and save as a Photoshop format. Remember your path. Place mine. OK. Now we're ready to go to ZBrush. You'll see that I already have a model with nice square topology on the front. That's where we're going to paint our texture. But the resolution is far too low. So we only want to change the resolution of the top. I'm going to hold Control and drag out a mask box to mask off the bottom. When we raise our topology, we don't want to change this edge here. So I'm going to crease it. Control Shift and drag the box over the bottom. Release Shift and press Alt. You'll see it turns red. That's deselect. Now release the mouse button. That hid all of the bottom topology. Now we can go to Geometry here and under the Crease tab, select Crease. That automatically dehides it, and you'll see that there is a creased edge. Now we're ready to divide. I'm going to use about a half a million polygons. That's probably far too many for what we're doing, but it's OK. All right, now we have a highly divided, highly high resolution surface. And really what we're looking for is if we turn the standard brush with a freehand stroke down to about the size of part of the texture that we're painting, we don't want any aliasing. And that looks really good. That's extremely high, <clears throat> extremely high resolution. Now we'll change to drag dot. Let's undo that painting and go to our alpha. We'll import and find the image, the Photoshop file that you saved before. Open that. And let's turn our draw size up and our intensity up and see what happens. OK, that's really ugly. You'll see that ZBrush by default uses white as 100% displacement and black as 0% displacement. So we're going to need to change that. Let's close our tool menu here and go to alpha. Drag that over to the empty space and let's invert our alpha. Control Z, undo. Now let's see what we have. OK, that's better, but it's very intense. Now we could go change that black to a lighter color, but let's just turn our intensity down to, let's say, 10. All right, that's about what we want. 
And the size is pretty good too, but you can always change the draw size. Let's make ours a little smaller. Okay, with the drag dot brush, you'll notice that if you just click where you want it, it's never at the angle that you want it, and it's really difficult to get it positioned how you want. So, you start off at the edge and drag toward the area you want. The top of the image will be in the direction you're going. Again, start off at the edge and drag in the direction that you want the top of the image to be. I want mine facing this way. And you can just keep doing that and make as much as you want here. Okay. Now that we're done with that, we can go to Z plugin and the 3D print exporter comes installed automatically with newer versions of ZBrush. If you don't have it, or if you've done a custom install or an older version of ZBrush, you can go to pixelogic.com, you can go to support, download center, and then go to ZBrush plugins and download the 3D print exporter. It will have instructions on how to install it. We are going to just use all the default settings here. We can cover those in another tutorial. But we want to press STL binary. This will export the STL binary. So we click that, and it lets us save it. Here's where I saved it earlier.